A Body of Doctrinal Divinity, Book 7, of the Final State of Man, Chapter 1, of the Death of the Body. The death to be treated of is not the death of the soul, which dies not, as will be seen hereafter, nor the moral or spiritual death, which has been discoursed elsewhere, nor the death of the soul and the body in hell, the second and eternal death, but the death of the body in a strict and proper sense. The things to be inquired into are what death is, who the subjects of it, what the causes of it, and its properties. First, what death is. To say what it is is difficult. Though there are continual instances of it before our eyes, our friends, our relatives who have gone through the dark passage have not returned to us to tell us what they met with, nor what they felt when the parting stroke was given, nor what they were surprised into at once. We know nothing of death, but in theory. It is defined by some as a cessation of the motion of the heart, and of the circulation of the blood, and of the flow of the animal spirit, occasioned by some defects in the organs and fluids of the body. No doubt such a cessation follows death, and such the effects of it. But what it is, it is chiefly to be known from the scripture, by which we learn, 1. That it is a disunion of the soul and the body, the two constituent parts of man. The one consists of flesh, blood and bones, or arteries, veins, nerves, and goes by the general name of flesh, and the other is a spiritual substance, immaterial and immortal, and consists of several powers and faculties, as the understanding, the will, the affections, and goes by the name spirit. Matthew 26, verse 41. Between these two, there is the nexus or bond which unites them together, though what this is none can tell. This puzzles all philosophy to say by what bands and ligaments things of such a different nature as matter and spirit be, should be coupled and fastened together. Now death is the dissolution of this union, a separation of these two parts in man, the body without the spirit, Hebrew word, separate from it, is dead. James 2, verse 26. When that is removed, the body is left, a lifeless lump of clay. 2. It is a dissolving of this earthly house or tabernacle. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1. The body is compared to a tabernacle, as is the body of Christ, of Peter and others. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 2. 2 Peter 1, 13, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 4, in allusion either to military tents or tabernacles pitched by soldiers when they encamp, or to those of shepherds which were removed from place to place for the sake of pasturage for their flocks, by which the brevity of human life is expressed. Isaiah 38, verse 12. Such tents or tabernacles were commonly made of hair cloth stretched out upon and fastened to stakes with cords and pins as allusions to them show. Isaiah 33 verse 20 and 54 verse 2 and the body and its several parts are fastened together with various cords. We read of the silver cord which is loosed at death. Ecclesiastes verse 12 verse 6 which whether it means the bond of union between the soul and the body in general or some particular part and ligament of the body about which interpreters are not agreed. It's not easy to say. However, besides what compacts the joints together, there are certain fibres or small cords like threads which those parts are fastened on which life mostly depends. There are certain valves of the veins through which the blood is discharged into the heart, which are fastened to the sides of the ventritures, of which with many tenuous fibres, to secure them when they are shut, which fibres are fastened to some protuberances or pins of the sides of the heart, 
Now, in case one of these valves should be out of order and unfit to perform its function, yea, if one of these little fibres should break or be either too short or too long to do their service, the tabernacle would fall down at once. On such slender things hangs the life of every man, even of the greatest monarchs upon the throne, as well as the meanest peasant. Now death is a pulling up of the stakes of this tabernacle, the body, the loosening and breaking its cords, and unpinning it, a taking it down, as it were, by parts, and laying it aside for a time. 3. It is signified by a departure out of this world to another, so the death of Christ and some others is expressed in such language. John chapter 13 verse 1, Luke chapter 2 verse 29, Philippians 1 23, 2 Timothy 4 7. It is like going from one house to another with the saints. It is a departure from their earthly house to an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, from houses of clay which have their foundation in the dust, to everlasting habitations, to mansions in Christ's Father's house. It is like loosing from one port, as the sailor phrases it, see Acts 13 verse 3 and 27 verse 13 and 28 verse 11, and launching into the deep, the sailing to another port, the port loosed or departed from at death is this world, which some loose from willingly, Others not so. The port or heaven to which saints are bound is heaven, the heavenly, the better country, to which desired haven they would arrive at death. And by death, death is a ship or a boat which wafts them over to the shores of eternity. The heathen had by tradition notions somewhat similar to these, though more coarse. For who has not heard of the Elysian fields, the Stargian lake, the old Corton's boat, by which are represented deaths wafting men over the black lake to fields of pleasure. But these images stand in a more beautiful light in the sacred pages, where the saints are represented as quickly wafting over the swellings of Jordan to the land of Canaan, a land of rest and pleasure. 4. Death is expressed by going the way of all the earth. So said Joshua when about to die, Behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. Joshua 23 verse 14. And so David, 1 Kings 2 verse 2. It is a going. So Christ described his death. Luke 22 verse 22. It is a going on a journey to a man's long home. It is a going from hence from this world, and a going whither we shall not return any more to this world to be, and live in it as formerly. It is going to an invisible state, to the world of spirits, of which we now have but little knowledge, and very imperfect conception of. See Psalm 39 verse 13, Job 10 verse 22, Job 10, 22, 21, the way lies through a dark valley, but God is the guide of his people through it. He is not only their guide unto death, but through it safe to glory. And this is the way all men go and must go. It is a common track, a beaten path, and yet unknown by us all. All must tread it, none can avoid it. 5. Death is called a returning to the dust of the earth of which the body is formed. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. The body is originally made of earth and dust which it is in life. It is nothing but dust and ashes as Abraham confessed he was. And when it dies he turns to dust. Genesis 3, 319. The body at death is turned into corruption rottenness and dust it is interred in the earth and mixes with it and becomes that which is an humbling consideration to proud man who if he look back to his origin it is dust 
If he considers himself to be in this present life, he is no other than a heap of dust. And if he looks forward to his last end, it will be the dust of the earth. His honour in every view of himself is laid in the dust. And this shows the knowledge of the power of God in raising the dead, who knows where the dust lies and will collect it thither and raise it up at the last day. 6. Death is frequently expressed by sleeping. Daniel 12, 2. John 11, verse 11 